We're going to look today at using the pen tool for isolation in Photoshop. And nothing gets you cleaner, smoother isolation lines than the pen tool. Selections can't get you the sort of razor sharp isolation that using the pen tool can get you. But it is a little tricky, so we're going to practice it on this coffee cup today and see if we can get some good isolations using the pen tool in Photoshop. So the pen tool, which is P on your shortcut or right down here on your toolbar, has several different options and before we start clicking away we want to make sure that the right options are selected so auto add delete is okay to have checked and right here you want to make sure that you have paths so if you're in shapes you'll see a whole different set of options and if I were in shapes I could start using the pen tool and create some cool vector objects but that's not what I want to do I want to create a selection so I'm going to make sure that this is on path. Perfect. All right, we're going to select this coffee cup and isolate it from its background. And because this coffee cup is so smooth and round, I really don't want to use a selection tool on it. I want perfectly smooth edges. So I'm going to use the path tool. The path tool is governed mainly by what I'm going to call handlebars. You can call these Bezier curves. Uh, it's been called the Bezier tool before, named after a man who was a genius named Pierre Bezier, who came up with the mathematics behind this tool, which I'm not going to even try to explain. But when you click, you'll notice that if you click and drag, you get handlebars. This is going to control the curves that are coming out of your pen. It's not a pen in the traditional sense of the word. You're not going to be able to draw with it we're going to create some specific curves I'm gonna undo this and start over again so I'm gonna start right here in the top I'm gonna to click and hold my click and drag I get these handlebars these are gonna control the curvature of my path I'm actually going to keep holding down on my click and press the shift key that's going to give me a perfectly level drag which is great because this coffee cup has a pretty perfect crescent and I'm trying to start right in the middle so I want it to be smooth. I'm gonna let go right about there. Now the handlebar I drug towards is the side on which my next path will automatically start curving. So I'm gonna click the direction that I drug. I drug to the right in this case when I click and drug the mouse so I'm going to keep going to the right. I'm gonna come down here on the side click hold my click and drag and you'll notice I am just holding my click and moving it around try to get it perfect alright that's perfect on the top but you notice how where my mouse is right now I'm still holding my click by the way my handlebar is pointing too far away from the coffee cup if I were to let it go here it would not give me a good side isolation here so I need the top handlebar to stay where it is but the bottom handlebar needs to move now what if you release your click and your handlebars are all in the wrong place? This is going to happen to you if you're new to the pen tool or if you've been using it for years. The pen tool can make you crazy sometimes. So you can manipulate these handlebars after the fact using an, the uh, select tool which is A. So if you hit A right here there is a direct selection tool. You'll see a path and a direct if you select the path you will move the entire path I'm going to undo that if you select the direct selection tool you can click on a point in your path and you can move just that and you can move the handlebars of just that point so have no fear if you accidentally let up on your click and your handlebars are askew then you can go in here using this direct selection tool and fix it However, back to our main problem is that the top handlebar is perfect, the bottom handlebar is not. Now I can use the direct select tool to uh, push it in, make it smaller, but actually what I want to do is just break the handlebars. I'm going to call it breaking them, which means I don't want them perfectly aligned. I want one of them to stay where it's at, and I want the other one to start in a new trajectory. I can do that by pressing the Alt key. When I press Alt or Option if you're using a Mac, I can move now this handlebar independently of the other one and I'm going to point it down the side of my coffee cup. 
Now I'm going to go back and get my pen tool and I'm going to click again. Now you'll notice if I click again after having used another tool I just started a whole new path out here in the middle of nowhere so how does that happen? What I need to do is undo that and with my pen tool active and my path here I need to go back to my last point and you notice the little icon that pops up when I roll over it's now going to connect my path to what I'm about to click next. So now I clicked my last point I'm going to click right down here in the corner of the coffee cup and the saucer. Now that's a good curve that I just made there. It's going to be a good smooth path. I hit Alt Option on a Mac again and I'm pulling my second handlebar out. Now the length of your handlebar makes a difference. So the further out you pull your handlebar, the further that curve is going to be affected by the handle that you're using. So if you don't want it affected much at all, you want hardly any handlebar. If you want to give a long, smooth curve, you make it longer. And this is going to take some practice on your part, just learning how to eye it up. In this case, I'm going to put my handlebar right about here. And then I'm going to make another point in my path right here. Click, hold, drag, and continue around the saucer. I'm going to go a little further click here. I'm holding shift right now to get a nice smooth circular flat path uh, handlebar selection there and then I'm going to continue around the saucer. And then just attach it over here. Holding alt or option again going to start up this side of the coffee cup and if you don't like it just undo start over again keep working your way now I'm going to attach and close my path so you'll notice that I have a little icon there when I roll over this point this is going to close my path I'm going to pull it all right my path is now closed. Now if you made some mistakes along the way, never fear. Remember we can go in here and get the direct selection tool. Like right here. I don't like this one so much. I didn't do that great of a job. I can actually just select that point using the direct select tool. Move this around a little bit. Try to get it where I want it. And if I get it about in the right place but still need to adjust some handlebars, I can do that. We're not messing with my image at all, just the path itself. So we're creating a work path here and just editing that work path. So now this is looking pretty good. I think I'm just going to be picky from here on out if I change anything. Let's make it in isolation. So you'll notice by default on your Photoshop uh, layers palette you also have channels and paths. So we're going to go over here to paths and it created a default work path for us. Just going to rename this to coffee cup it's only really necessary if you're making several paths but uh, it's just a good practice to have to name it so you know what your path was for then down here on the bottom I can do several things with my path I want to create a selection from it so I'm gonna load this path as a selection hit that I now have the path loaded as a selection with it selected I'm gonna go over here into my layers palette having the layer I want a mask selected and I'm gonna click add layer mask boom now there again you'll notice some discrepancies on the side I can take care of that by undoing control Z deselecting control D just going back into my path choosing it again and then going into my direct select tool and continuing to tweak it. So I'm not stuck with with anything as a final when it comes to a path. So if I didn't think I did a good job, I can move it around a little bit, make sure it looks the way I want it, go back, reselect it, go into layers, add as a layer mask again. And you'll see that that wasn't perfect necessarily up there again either. But the difference here between this and a selection tool would be that if I put a layer underneath it you'll notice that these lines here these are perfectly straight lines 
So I'm not dealing with any fuzzy edges, which sometimes is caused when you're using the magic wand or the quick select tool. These are perfectly straight, razor sharp edges. So it's a great tool for making those kind of complicated masks and selections, especially if you just need that straight edge. So this is a tool I use all the time. I hope this is useful for you. Go out and try it for yourself. Subscribe to the channel. You can also check out the other videos on how to use things like quick select, how to use the magic wand tool, refine edge, how to isolate hair and such, but hopefully this gives you a quick introduction into the pen tool and using Bezier curves, and man, you're just going to be a genius. Go out there and do some cool stuff with Photoshop, and then show me what you got. I'll see you later.